A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the 24th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report, the first of the 2023 year and um, a lot of things to speak about with regards to uh, the global weather and climate at the moment. This was the temperature normally back on the 1st of January. It was, I believe, seven countries that recorded the warmest January day in history, in recorded history, that is, um, with temperatures knocking the door of 20 Celsius in parts of Central Europe. And, of course, that is um, opened the floodgates to the uh, global warming crowd talking about uh, how the Earth is burning up. This is the uh, most extreme event ever recorded in European weather history. That is, I believe, what I've been seeing um, in some of the uh, Twitter feeds uh, lately, which is a pretty big call, if you ask me, to say such a statement. So Europe is experiencing its worst heat wave ever recorded. Um, the combined intensity and scale of this winter heat wave is unlike anything in European history, according to Colin McCarthy. So the worst heat wave ever recorded, um, certainly I would have thought that some of the heat waves during the summertime would have been worse than uh, what's been seen in the month of January, of course. Um, so, of course, the threads on Twitter are full of um, a lot of talk about this heat wave and how the glaciers and the upper portion of the Alps and whatnot is, um, is melting away and... Uh, we have got reason to be very, very concerned. Um, so, yeah, I'm not wanting to get too bogged down with um, what side of the argument you're on, um, but it's certainly uh, rather interesting, of course, to see what's taking place. And this record warmth has been highlighted here, uh, not just in recent times, but it did make mention back in the 1st of December, ahead of the, the two to two and a half week cold spell that was seen uh, across much of uh, northwestern Europe, including the British Isles and Ireland, but we would see a pullback uh, week three of December, a milder spell in, in the run up to Christmas, then a little bit of back and forth, and then the month of January through at least the first half would be driven by a positive Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation, and that would mean a strengthening of the zonal westerlies or the jet stream that is basically flooding um, North America with Pacific Air and Europe with Atlantic Air. And of course, it's very similar weather pattern actually to back in November. Remember back to November when we had some record breaking warmth, strong area of high pressure over Europe, we had a strong gesture across the Atlantic. As these areas of low pressure approached the UK, they slowed down with the resistance to the high to the east. And therefore, we've seen a lot of rain as well as low pressure bombardment that also in turn kept the southwesterly winds going and it, it produced a very very warm november and indeed a very wet november as well so i suppose the point that i'm trying to make is uh, the pattern is very similar to what we've seen back in november and again it's like the pattern is continuously repeating itself both in mild spells and indeed cold spells. And of course, the big golden question is going to be, do we see the return, not necessarily of December's cold, but do we see a return in the large scale hemispheric uh, you know, scale? Do we see the pattern returning back to something where there's more high latitude blocking and indeed colder weather underneath in the mid latitude? So this is the month of December. And you can see here that, of course, Northern Europe, as well as uh, the UK and Ireland, seen a, a cold in a normal December. Uh, we've seen central and western portions of Canada, the northern United States, uh, much of uh, really a large, huge area actually here, stretching from the Caspian Sea all the way to the Pacific coast below normal, with the exceptions of Pakistan and India. Uh, we had a cold uh, equatorial region. Australia was below normal. Average conditions across Indonesia, much of the uh, you know central and northern portions of South America was below normal as well, and of course this was driven by a negative Arctic oscillation, North Atlantic oscillation. Here is the month of January so far, 
and you notice here that we have got a lot of warmth to speak about and of course this is where everybody wants to jump in on the bandwagon of global warming and climate change and whatnot here i'm still uh, very much on the fence with the whole argument regarding this is the worst we've ever seen in x amount of thousands if not millions of years uh, i'm kind of stress you know i struggle with the whole idea that we haven't seen something like this in the past um but like i say i want to talk about what's going on globally that is the whole point in my global weather and climate report and i will discuss climate stuff but i don't want to get myself involved too much in the whole bandwagon over um you know the reasons behind it you know my thoughts if you have been on this channel for some time now you know what i think regarding the climate and how i believe that we have been here before this is the year of 2022 the mean temperature for the British Isles here and very clear to see that it has been warmer as opposed to cooler. What is interesting to see is the standout cold uh, plunge during the first two weeks of December and this uh, really stands out compared to what we've seen through the, the, the you know all the way back to January. Um, so it has been a very very warm year and that's a, a terrific graph actually produced by the met office here this is a tweet by uh, by aiden the Givern of the met office um, always um delivers great uh, content on the met office and um, i do encourage you to check out their um their videos just today they've published the, the 10 day outlook and it's quite interesting actually uh, what that says but here is also an interesting tweet by our good friend David Birch, uh, based in Walsall. Uh, always provides some good counterbalance to the whole climate change argument. And uh, this is, um, you know, the UAH temperature uh, going back to 2011. Of course, we did see a general, yeah, up and down, but we did see a rise in the overall UAH temperature uh, in the run up to the, the super. El Nino that went off, then we've seen a little bit of a, a drop, a rise, and then we've been seeing that little bit of a drop off, uh, you know, from about 2020 to, to now. You can see the sharp decrease in the UAH as we go uh, to the current period here. So despite the fact that 2022 was the warmest year in recorded history for the British Isles, for Europe, and, you know, we're seeing unprecedented heat and whatnot, um, it's always interesting to see other aspects, other sides of um, the, the argument or other content and data that's out there. It is over my head, folks. I'm not portraying to know exactly the whole argument with regards to global warming, climate change, carbon dioxide and whatnot. But uh, I do believe it's a lot more complicated than what um, many media sources would like to portray. So... Um, but certainly it has been uh, on the mild side and you know <clears throat> with the Madden Julian oscillation in um, unfavorable cold phases at the moment and there is projection to go in into the similar kind of phase to what we seen back in the early portion of December that produced the cold. That is going to be interesting and that's going to be the big test. But certainly the winter forecast at this moment in time, I did read through it again actually this morning when I was lying in bed. And, you know, it's playing out pretty much exactly what I thought. Uh, we had the cold December. I do have an average to slightly above average January uh, based on the fact that uh, I believe that at least the first two weeks of, of January would be um, driven by a, a zonal westerly Atlantic jet stream, especially if you didn't get a stratospheric warming. There isn't really any firm evidence to suggest that we're going to see a sudden stratospheric warming in the next couple of weeks, at least anyway. Even if we did see it, say in mid-month, the response to that wouldn't actually be to the end of, of, of January, even into the early portion of February. Now, if you look at my winter forecast, I do make mention of the fact that I believe that the coldest period of the entire winter could actually come in February. That also remains to be seen. We'll wait and see exactly what takes place. 
But certainly up until now, uh, through the first four days of January, we have got a lot of warmth around. We, we, we equally do have a lot of, of, of cold conditions as well. Uh, northeastern portions of Siberia, we've got parts of Mongolia, we've got western China, but well below normal. Northern India, Pakistan, Iran, much of Africa, uh, northern Australia, um, you know, a good swathe of South America is below average as well. So let's just keep perspective. Let's look at the big global picture as opposed to just honing in on Europe. Eastern North America uh, has been incredibly warm as well, but it's all down to the global drivers that's in place at the moment. And we are seeing a coupling within the stratosphere, the troposphere, strong zonal winds enhancing the jet stream. And we're seeing the response to that within the middle altitude pattern. Do we see any kind of changes coming up? I don't really th think we've got anything particularly solid in terms of changes in the next 10 days or so. If we play through the JFS here, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly chart here for the Northern Hemisphere. You can see a lot of low pressure here, if you notice here, uh, you know, crossing the Northern portion of Asia here uh, through the Pacific into North America, of course. Uh, we've also got these deep areas of low pressure, one after the other, that's kind of spinning in off the Atlantic here. So you can see here that we are continuously driving ocean air into the continents of North America and, and Europe here high pressure to the east and low pressure to the west we've got that constant warm source coming in uh, to the european continent but notice here by the time we kind of skip out to the middle portion of the month here we do have a little bit of a build-up of pressure if you notice here across the north atlantic up towards northern portions of north america do we see an undercut and trough here in response to that so what we're watching is do we see some of these oranges these above normal height areas um, you know, starting to kind of build up and maybe start to push towards the higher latitudes up towards Greenland, up towards the Arctic region, sending the Arctic oscillation back negative again. So if we skip through the loop here, you notice here that as I play through it quickly, you notice here how the areas of low pressure can just dance around the middle latitude pattern here. What that could be doing is that could be having some influence on the lower portion of the stratosphere and i think that's why the models are indicating that we're seeing some warming taking place between siberia and towards the pole or towards north america i think it's because we're seeing these rosby waves spinning around like a on a top and it's affecting the atmosphere into the tropospheric polar vortex and that in turn could be warming part of the stratosphere but the question is, do we see any kind of solid response to that? That is, of course, uh, going to be remaining, um, remains to be seen, really. So a lot of complicating factors to play into the equation at the moment. The Manjilin Oscillation, I think, will play a big role. Other drivers within the Pacific, the WPO, the EPO and whatnot, all aspects to consider. But it looks as if through the next couple of weeks, through at least the first half of January, we're going to continue to see the jet stream growing, bringing milder, bringing wet conditions to the western portion of North America, western portion of Europe. And let's watch this space when it comes to the second half of January here. But certainly there is a lot of things going on at the moment here. And we do have some terrific warmth to speak about as well. So we will watch this space as we go forward. Not sure if. Duncan's tweet will come up or not, uh, it isn't unfortunately. Uh, he provides some very interesting things with regards to the temperature anomalies and whatnot. So plenty of things to look at and keep it right here on my YouTube channel. I have surpassed 4,000 subscriptions, so I'm very, very grateful to you for uh, not only watching the video day by day, dropping your comments, uh, liking, showing YouTube that you're enjoying the content, but also I appreciate each and every subscription and the support that you give me. Hopefully, I will continue to deliver uh, interesting uh, videos for you to look at, looking at uh, all aspects and not just focusing too much on one side of any argument, trying to stay as unbiased as possible. But thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening, and I'll hopefully see you again tomorrow with more. Bye for now.